Welcome children. Today we will start with a new chapter, chapter 5 in history, rulers and buildings for standard 7th and this is the first part of this chapter. Children, can you identify this building? Yes, it is the Qutub Minar in Delhi. It was built in 1199 and still standing strong. It is a 73 meter high tower that consists of five stories and a spiral staircase with 379 steps. And it is said it took 28 years to build this. Isn't it a architectural masterpiece? Yes, the techniques and the constructions that they have used built in red sandstone were much ahead of their times. So we are going to learn in this chapter many such wonderful creations of architecture. Now children, let us take a closer look at the architectural skills that they have used in the Qutub Minar. You can see arches have been used, yes, and there are jalis and inside it must have been very difficult and this building is not straight, it is curved and angular and you can see the next brands have geometrical designs on it and these two brand, bands that you see on the building they have inscriptions from the Quran written in calligraphy calligraphy is a beautiful handwriting must have been so difficult in those days and this building is still standing strong and just look at the architectural marvel it's a true masterpiece now this slide shows the geometrical designs which have been made in the Qutub Minar. You can see in the closer look how intricate these designs are. Now children, the Qutub Minar was built by Qutubuddin Aibak. He built only the first floor and he died. And then it was taken up by Iltutmish who built the rest of the building. And finally further it was repaired by Alauddin Khilji, then Muhammad Tughlaq, Feroz Shah Tughlaq and Abraham Lodi. And Qutub Minar is famous for his architectural masterpiece, especially for the use of arches, geometrical designs and inscriptions from the Quran. The structures that were built during the 8th and 18th century by the kings and his officials and merchants were of two kinds. He built buildings which were for his safety and grandeur that means grandeur means to show his social importance how powerful and wealthy he was and the other type of building for the public welfare okay so let us see which are the buildings he built for his safety and grandeur he built forts palaces tombs and garden residence so his house was surrounded by a garden for public welfare they built temples mosques tanks wells Karvasarais and bazaars. Now his other officials and merchants also built buildings but they were smaller in size. There were temples, mosques, wells and domestic structures for example mansions and havelis. So children here are some examples of the buildings that were made by the kings for their safety and grandeur. You can see this is a fort then we have the palaces, you can see the palaces, the tomb and there's a garden residence. You can see the residence which has garden all around it. So these were some of the buildings that were made by the king for their safety and grandeur. So children here are some pictures which the kings build for public utility. You can see here is a temple, then a mosque, bazaar. Now uh, you can see this is a tank and here it is a well, you can see the step well, okay. And they also built Karvasarais. Now what are Karvasarais? They are actually rest houses for the travelers. When the travelers would travel the whole day and at night they would need a place to rest. So the kings made these Sarais for them where they could rest and next morning they could get up and continue their journey. And this was all free of cost. There were other buildings made by merchants like temples, mosques, wells which you have already seen the photographs on and here is a domestic building that the merchants built for themselves which were called as mansions 
in English and in Urdu they were called as Haveli. So this is one picture of a Haveli. Children, the monuments and the buildings provide an understanding of the technical skills that were used for construction. So now let us look into some of the engineering skills and the constructions that the kings used between the 8th and 18th century. Now children, between the 7th and 10th century, architects started adding more windows, doors and rooms to the buildings and they started the use of super structure okay and they were either tribute style then they started making arches arches were of two types true arches and cobbled arches then they also used limestone cement now in my next slide i'll be explaining each of them in detail now children what is a superstructure this came into being the use of superstructure between the 7th and 10th century. So you can see in this figure what is a superstructure, the part of a building above the ground floor. So you can see the foundation, if you have seen a building, first a foundation which is the, the hole is dug under the earth and then bricks are laid there, that is the foundation that is called as a substructure. Then we have the ground floor and on top of the ground floor there is another floor which is made and then the roof that is called as a super structure. Now between the 7th and 10th century roofs, windows and doors were constructed by placing a ho horizontal beam across two vertical columns. So you can see this is an horizontal beam and these are two vertical columns also called as posts okay so between that they would place an horizontal beam which will support the roof okay but later on they wanted more uh, elaborate style or making arches in, they didn't want this horizontal beam so we look into how they did it at that time now this style where an horizontal beam is placed over two vertical columns was called as a trebit style. So children here you can see clearly about the horizontal beam that I was telling you. It is placed over two vertical columns. It is placed across two vertical columns and this beam supports the roof. So children this slide shows clearly how the doors and windows were first made. You can see two vertical columns upon that across it was an horizontal beam placed okay but they wanted more elaborate kind of a thing more archi architecturally better so they made this kind of an arch which is called as a cobbled arch you can see here the bricks are placed horizontally okay but they wanted it further better so it's more rounded this is a true arch where they place the bricks can you see in slanting vertical manner and in the center they placed another brick which was called as a keystone and this bore the weight of the structure above it. So this was the change after the 10th century we see more true arches being made. So here is another slide and which shows clearly how a true arch and a cobbled arch, the difference you can see. The only difference is that here you can see the bricks are placed vertically, okay. They are placed vertically and in the center we have a keystone which bears the weight of the entire structure above. And this is a cobbled arch where you can see the bricks are placed horizontally. So these were the two new techniques that were made after the 10th century we can say the creation of true arches. Now another technology that they used in the construction of superstructure was the use of limestone cement. Now lime was mixed with stone chips to make it hard and then just like as we apply cement on the bricks and place another brick on it similarly to stick all the bricks together they would use this limestone cement okay and this made construction very easy and fast so this was one of the technologies that they used between the 8th and 18th century use of limestone cement so children actually there were two technological and stylish developments that were noticeable during this 
time period in the 12th century we see that the weight uh, the weight of the superstructure above the doors and windows were carried out by making arches and this kind of an arch that you see in the first figure yes where the entire weight is on the keystone you can see in the center the keystone is called as the arcuate style okay and the second technology was the use of limestone so children let us recap the technologies that were used between the 8th and 8th century earlier they started with a trebid style of making uh, doors and windows that was by placing an horizontal beam across two vertical columns then they wanted to make an elaborate structure and beautify the doors and windows they started making arches and arches were made in two ways they were called as arched style true arches by using a keystone and vertical uh, stones placed in it whereas cobbled arches were rounded and placed as horizontal uh, bricks on it then they also used limestone cement lime was mixed with small stone chips so that it becomes hard and concrete and then this was used in sticking the stones together or bricks together now moving ahead now let us look into how and why the kings built temples mosques and tanks now children let us see why the temples were constructed by kings now there are four major reasons given one was to show their power second to show their wealth and they, these temples were a storehouse of wealth in fact they would pump all kinds of precious stones gold and silver idols uh, the statues of gods and goddesses were made of gold so they really pumped in all the wealth in those, these temples then they wanted to show the people their devotion to god and also to show the people that they are representatives of god on earth so these were the four main reasons why the kings constructed the temples now this is a picture of the raja rajeshwara temple it is also called as bihedreshwar temple it is in tanjavur it is still there and it was built by the chola king raja raja deva okay and it was built for the worship of the god raja rajeshwara do you notice that the names of the ruler and the gods are very similar yes the kings took the god's name because it was auspicious and they wanted to appear like god okay so that's the reason one of the reasons why they made temples now as i mentioned a few moments ago that the kings built temples and even his the, his officials or merchants also built temples now what kind of temples did the kings make and the merchants make the kings constructed large temples which of famous gods like shiva and vishnu and the uh, merchants used to build smaller temples in size which were uh, of deities which were not so popular okay so that was the difference between the temples built by the kings and by his other officials or merchants now just like the hindu kings built temples to show their power their wealth their devotion to god and also they considered themselves as representative to god similarly mughal rulers also built mosques in india uh, one of the famous mosque you can see is was built by shah jahan is the jama masjid in his new capital shah janabad that is purani delhi now between 1650 and 1656 uh, qutbuddin aibak also built the qawwat ul islam mosque it is in the same complex as the qutub minar okay now the muslim sultans and bachas did not consider themselves as incarnation of god but the chroniclers who used to write all historical events have described the sultan as a shadow of god one of them wrote that they are architect of work, workshop of empire and religion and another inscription that you can see in the qawwat ul islam mentioned that alauddin khilji was considered as a big king and he has the qualities of moses and solomon who well, moses and solomon they are the law givers and considered great people by the jews okay so there is a comparison of the sultans to be like god or a representative of god or a shadow of god similarly like the hindu kings 
so children here you see some pictures of the mosque built by the muslim rulers the first one you see is the jama masjid built by shah jahan and the second one the first mosque that was built in india is the kuwaitul islam mosque built by qutbuddin aibak now children just look at the features of the mosque you can see this is a dome feature which you will find in all mosques is one of the typical features of a mosque mosque is a place of worship for the muslims now there is a minaret from where they do the azan yes they call out their prayers you can see there there will be a loudspeaker kept there where the prayers are said so a person sits here and says the prayers of the muslims early in the morning then you see this is the ablution fountain where it is a wash area when the muslims come into the mosque they first wash their feet and then get into the prayer hall so you can see this is a prayer hall where they sit and mats are placed and the direction in which the muslims play, uh, uh, pray that is towards mecca that is towards the west even because it is towards the west from india so they pray in the west direction it is known as the qibla and just to make sure th that this is called as the qibla wall which is facing the direction of mecca and this gateway is very well decorated with tiles and uh, calligraphy from verses from the quran are written here and this is called as a qibla wall or it is also called as mihrab and then you can see a mini bar here where it is you can see a steps here and a raised platform where the imam or the priest sits to say the prayers so these are some of the features of a mosque now the children the kings and the sultans built tanks and reservoirs also for the people why did they build there were mainly two reasons to build to make precious water available to all especially during the times when there were no rainfall and to earn respect from the people now what let us see which are the examples of tanks and reservoirs hoz e sultani was built by sultan iltutmish it means the king's reservoir and then we see also ta uh, tanks and reservoirs built in temples mosque and gurudwara like you have in the golden temple the holy sarovar okay in persia the term abad means prosperous flourishing and abadi means populated so when the when we are prospering and our know, people are there that is why actually it comes from the word ab means water so wherever there is water it will lead to population and it will also be a flourishing place you see all civilizations have settled here water wherever the water is there we are it's going to be fertile and the region is going to be very very flourishing and prosperous so children here you see some pictures of the tanks made by the kings and the sultans here first picture you can see the, uh, the golden temple the holy sarovar tank then this was built by iltutmish hoze sultani and then here is another temple tank in hampi in karnataka so children with this we conclude the first part of this chapter and very soon i'll be taking out the video on the second part of the chapter till then please do view and subscribe thank you